Okay. Okay. Let's join the prayer. Amen. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا نبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> First of all I would like to say that uh, I am extremely grateful to Allah Almighty who has enabled me to meet such a respectable guest from Canada who are so keen to listen to what I am going to say. The subject given to me is uh, a very wide subject. It's a very, very broad subject just like a great ocean and it's not at all possible to encompass everything within few minutes. So naturally we will have to make a cut, a cut short to cover the subject. The subject is uh, my experience and my feelings and observation regarding the institution of Khilafat in jamaat e Ahmadiyya. All of you must be having some answer to that one, but I would like to say in the beginning that it's not possible for any of us that we can wish that I should be born at such and such time. Nobody can wish. It is the decree of Allah. And I feel extremely grateful to Allah Almighty that uh, I opened up my eyes in Qadian during the period of the Khilaf, second Khilafat of Hadrat Muslim Maud Razilatalano. And I was born in <coughs> Qadian and uh, I spent s some years there without knowing much except what was the, the inner picture of the house because I was not able to go outside being a very newborn baby. So I only remember that the house was like that. And then along with my family, we came to Pakistan. Then we stayed in Chinyot, then stayed in Ahmadnagar, close to Rabwa, and finally we settled in Rabwa. So that is how the journey starts. That was the period of Hazrat Muslim Aud Anhu, who was a great, great sign of Allah Almighty. He was the fulfillment of a great prophecy of the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he was in full swing at that time when this partition took place because he came to the office long ago and he was very in the bloom of his life during the partition. So when the Jamaat was rooted out from Qadian and they, most of them, they went to Pakistan, the question was, was where to go? <coughs> there was no place, no headquarter, no organization there, scattered Ahmadis were there. So then Allah Almighty showed Hadrat Muslim Maud in the dream, a picture of the place where the new headquarter is to be made. The Jamaat found out various places, Hazur went to one or two, and finally he said that this place which is right now, the Rabba place, is the place which was shown to me. And that is where the community has to build its center. So this is how this started. And the early days, I, I will mentioning mostly the things based on my observation and my experience. In early days, I remember the building in Rabwa, they were not uh, properly built buildings, mud, clay, and you know, roughly uh, not baked uh, bricks were there, but the raw bricks. And the clay was there and they just had that uh, material to build. And I have spent some nights in Rabwa in those days on those uh, uh, bricks which were made, put into a wall, but there was always so many holes in that. 
during the night when the wind blew and the storm came, then all this, uh, the dust would come in. So much so that when all the family members, they would wake up, it was not able to recognize one another. That was the way. And outside, walking was a tough exam um, trial for people, particularly those people who come from the uh, cities. They normally try to travel and walk on toes. Reason was that there was always that salt on the ground. So in that place, Hadrat Muslim Anho had also his residence. <coughs> I have seen that place where Hazur has been working in the office and also leading the prayer in the mosque nearby. Fazli Umar Hospital was there. I think you may not be familiar with that one. But that was the early beginning. And Huzur then put so much effort in building Rabwa as a full-fledged city, as a center of the Jamaat, that I think now we can say that Rabwa, by the grace of Allah, is one of the most beautiful and well-populated, well-organized, despite all the persecution that the community has to face there. But still, the Jamaat has developed it in such a way, it's a very flourishing city in Pakistan. So anyway, that was one of the achievements of Hazrat Muslim Maud Razila Talanho. So what I remember about Hazrat Muslim Maud, let me just take you along with me. I remember being a very young child of seven, eight years at that time. I remember see, seeing him, Huzur many times coming to lead the prayer in the Masjid Mubarak, then leading the prayer. I have the honor of offering several prayers, several times behind Huzur, listening to his Friday sermons. Al, al, although I don't uh, even re recollect what was being said at that time, because my age was not to understand everything, but I still remember Huzur with his turban, with his long coat, kameez salwar, with his stick in his hand, he comes and stands on my and then he starts speaking and goes on speaking. And so fluently, so easily, so beautifully, that uh, one subject, another subject, commentary of one verse, another verse, hadith, quotations, all these things coming one by one. His speech was like a fast flowing river. I can in one sentence say like that. And people used to listen with pin drop silence, full attention. I was also many times, I had the honor of that one. I still cannot say that I could understand that one, but I still have that, uh, the pleasure of being there and telling to you that I was present at that time. Then I have the honor of listening to some of the speeches of Huzur during Jalsa Salana. In those days, Jalsa Salana was not uh, in the current place like where Masjid Aqsa is there, it used to be in the ground of a, a Nusrat Girls High School. That was the place where it used to take place. Marquis and Shamianas were erected there. Huzur would come. I remember that Huzur's speeches used to be very long. I mean, normally speeches are 30 minutes, 40 minutes at the most. But Huzur's speeches, sometimes four hours, five hours, seven hours, eight hours. During the speeches, kava would be brought. He would sip, have a break, sometime make a short interval, but continue like that. The people used to listen with rapt attention. And you can imagine, in cold weather, to sit and open, because there was no uh, covering on the head. This uh, kasir was there to sit on, on the grass or the dust. People used to put there, enjoying the peanuts. That was the favorite thing to eat at that time. But they were rapt attention. They used to listen to Zur's speeches. And uh, I can tell you that sometimes people would like to go to washroom, but they would like to avoid that because they don't want to miss a single word 
what was being said to him. This was the great attachment to Hazur Ayyadar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anho, I can say. People would say that, no, keep on, keep on staying there until the moment they could not tolerate and then, then they have to go. <laughs> and while going, standing up, they would advise the person, keep, listen attentively and tell me the gist when I come there. <laughs> so this was the dedication of those people. And uh, eating nuts and rodeo, that was very common. And, but we rapid attention. I remember, I tell you one thing. <clears throat> the subject is very vast, I don't know where I have started and where I am going. But uh, I, I, please go along with me. Uh, I remember one great chalsa in 1956. None of you was there at that time. So 1956, the chalsa, that was the time when in the community there were certain hypocrites, munafiqeen, who started a campaign against the institution of Khilafat. Then Hadrat Muslim Aud spoke on that subject. Two books were published, and then later on the examination of that was also taken from all the members of the Jamaat. So I remember, to cut a long story short, very long story is in my, in my mind coming. I am not helping with the notes there, notes are there. The, the, question, the point I want to tell you that uh, in 1956, Huzur spoke very eloquently, very powerfully, very forcefully on the subject of these munafiqeen, the hypocrites in Jamaat. And he mentioned one thing, apart from other things, that uh, these hypocrites, they are trying to create division in community and anxiety and despair and disappointment. But I tell them, all of them, they should listen with open eyes and ears that Allah Almighty has given me the assurance that Jamaat is going to survive this trial. And then further on he said, and that is the point I want to mention particularly. Huzur mentioned that uh, during the lifetime of the Holy Prophet wasallam, there were such uh, hypocrites were there, trials were there, difficulties were there, Ghazawat, battles were there. As at that time, Allah Almighty enabled Hazrat Khalid bin Walid to defend the cause of Islam and to support the uh, uh, mission of the Holy Prophet So, in this time as well, I declare that Allah Almighty has also gifted me with some Khalid bin Walid in Jamaat. That is the historic thing. And then Huzur went on. I was sitting on Kasir in front of the stage, quite some distance was there. Huzur said after this declaration, he then named Hadrat Mulana Jalaluddin Sabshams. He named my late father, Mulana Bulata Sahib, and Hadrat Abdul Rahman Sab Khadim. Three people, by name he mentioned that these are the Khalid given to me by God Almighty. And they are going to give the rebuttal to all the allegation of the hypocrites. And they will defend the cause of Ahmadiyyat just as Hazrat Khalid bin Walid did. So Huzur prayed that I pray that our, may Allah give these people long life and knowledge, strength, ability to defend the cause of Ahmadiyyat. <coughs> I'm coming to an emotional point, much more than that what you have heard. I was there sitting there I could realize what has been said. I was full of emotions. And my father sitting on the stage, very close to the Huzur and all other dignitaries. Jalsa was over. Then I came home. And my father came also later on. And in his hand, there was a bag full of sweets, which he purchased on the way to celebrate the thanks to Allah Almighty for what he has listened. He came to the house. My mother was there, sister, brother, myself. He just uh, sat on a charpai. And then he started speaking, my father. 
but it was difficult for him to speak. He was so emotional, so overwhelmed, that he would say, start saying one sentence, and he would finish in the middle, could not continue. And the gist of that I can tell you, he mentioned one thing, which, take, which has a great lesson in that. He mentioned that uh, I remember the day when I was born in a small village of Kriha in Jalandhar district in India to poor parents. My parents were not wealthy. They were not even having enough money for, to spend for my education. So though I was a, a son of them and I was born there, then I, my father took me to Kadiyan, then I entered in Jamia Amdiya, then I studied I this and this and this and all these things. All these things he mentioned in brief. And then he tore into, he was, you know, in tears. And uh, he could not utter the words properly. I still can visualize and think that one. He said that now, today, <clears throat> this day has come, that this humble servant has been named as Khalid bin Walid by Hadrat Muslim. He broke it into years. And all the family members, they were in the same state. And it's difficult to, for me to give you a sketch of that moment. But that was the greatness of the Muslim out, Razilatalano. On one occasion, I just moved from this very moving story. Uh, once there was a debate with non Ahmadis in some place, and they had demanded that we are only ready to go for a debate if the head of the community, Mirza Sahib, he himself comes to speak against our Mullah, or at least somebody with a due authority is sent as his representative. So this letter was presented to Huzur. The Nizarete Slaur Shad appointed my uh, <coughs> father with the approval of Huzur to go and uh, debate with that mullah. So my father was standing outside the stairs case and Huzur came out. My father said that, uh, Huzur, I'm going, please kindly pray for me. And then uh, Huzur asked my father, yes, you stay on, I will come back. And then Huzur came back with a letter in his hand, which he wrote very quickly. The subject matter was that Azur told my father that these people have demanded that either I should go or I should give the authority to someone who would be taken as my representative. So I have written this letter, have a look at that. So you can imagine what was the feeling. My father says, and that letter is on record, Azur uh, wrote in that that in response to the demand of the non Ahmadis, uh, I am sending, written the name of Mulya Alladetta as he was known at that time, as my representative. And then the next uh, sentence was such, which really broke my father into tears. Huzur has written that his victory will be my victory and his defeat will be my defeat. So that authority and that trust was given to that moment. And my father always remembered this thing, that this was the kindness and love and affection and trust of Azur. And he always prayed like that. Anyway, I think uh, I am moving in some wrong direction. <laughs> Let me move further on. The period of Hadrat Muslim Maud is a golden period of his Ahmadiyya history. And a lot of things are there. Jamaat was very weak because there was a conspiracy of the Munafiqeen at that time during the period of Hadrat Khalifa Tumsi Awal. They were always thinking there should be no institution of Khalafat. <coughs> so Hadrat Muslim Maud was only 25 years of age. And uh, these people were very strong and they were against that. So anyway, at that time, Hazrat Muslim worked so hard day and night 
that Ahmadiyyat was established on firm ground, Tariq Jadid was there to spread the message all over the world, and institutions, Khudamul Ahmadiyya, Ansarullah, Lajma, Nasrat, everything was established, and so many other things. I cannot count all of them even by uttering the name of that. The whole structure of the Jamaat was made so strong that Jamaat was well established. Then came the time when Jamaat had to move from out from Qadiyan. It was the partition of India and Pakistan. Therefore, majority Hazur himself and the majority of the members, they moved to Pakistan. No place to go. Where to go? There is no headquarters there, no place. As I mentioned earlier on, they came to Lahore, but then immediately Allah Almighty gave this place of Rabba and the Hadrat Muslim Aud was the really the real article, architect of that one. And he was the leader of all the community and giving them so much dedication and spirit and zeal that they worked day and night and everything was done. So anyway, when Hazrat Muslim Aud passed away, I'm cutting, you know, betting, jumping quickly. When he passed away, there was a comment made by the uh, magazine Pegham Suda, which was against the Jamaat, but the leader, Malvi Muhammad Yaqub Sahib, he wrote an article. The title of that was, Huzur has mentioned recently in his sermon as well, The Great Nation Builder. His obituary note about Muslim Aud, that he was a great nation builder. That was the tribute paid to him. After that, it was the time for the second Khilafat. Second Khilafat was established in 1965. And Hazrat Muslim Aud was the Khalifa for all that long time. 1965. At that time, uh, I can tell you that uh, when the election of the Caliph was being taken, taking place in the mosque, I was outside the mosque in the grassy flat there, along with thousands of people who were waiting outside as to what is the outcome of that. So at that time, it was luckily my father who was given the task to uh, declare that Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmad has been elected as the second caliph. And the people outside, because the doors were closed, inside, outside, all the premises were and those people who are outside in the field, they may now come in to join in the first open bath, because one bath is taken from the delegates well before. The second is the open bath. And I remember, that is I want to share with you. I was a young man, you can imagine my, what was my age, young man at that time. I was sitting there, as soon as I say the doors are open, come in for the bath, I put all my energy and I ran as, as quickly as I could to jump the people and go early, closer and closer to Huzur. So I luckily was able to enter into the mosque and then started creeping in this row, next row, next row. Ultimately, I was in third or fourth row, you know, in front of Huzur Ta'ala, Huzur Anyway, I joined that one. That remember, that is the memory which I remember. And uh, I was able to write an article which was published in Al Fazl on these days, and that's available at this time as well. <coughs> then, during the period of Hazrat Khalifa Musi Salis, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, I had a very close connection uh, with him in so many ways. I was uh, a student in school at that time, then, during this period, I got admission in college. I had the honor of meeting him several times and talking to him, give, taking advice from him. He was also very kind to me. I remember once uh, when I received a gold medal for a certain achievement, which I don't remember now. Hadrat uh, Mulana Jalaluddin Shams was there to put that gold medal on my chest. And because of the, uh, what is it called that, uh, clip. It was not easy to fix very early, very soon. It was taking some time. I remember Hazrat Muslim, Hazrat Khalifat Musi Salis 
who was the principal of the college at that time. I am telling you that uh, he knew me at that time and I also knew him since then, that time. He came to close to me while Shamsa was trying to stick that badge on my chest. He came, Hadrat Mirza Nasir Ahmasai, and spoke very quietly in my ears that take care of this gold medal. Don't give it to your father. He will, he will spend it for Al Furqan. <laughs> because he knew that the Al Furqan magazine, which was very popular in those, those days, that was uh, fin financed purely by my father. Although a subscri subscription of five, uh, uh, five rupee for one year was the subscription in those days. Now you can imagine. And, but the expense was very great. Anyway, Huzur mentioned that take care of this, otherwise your father is going to spend it there. When I related this thing to my father, he very enjoyed it. He said, at least Huzur knows, he knows the principal side, that this is my personal <coughs> contribution and effort. Huzur was very kind, very humble. I remember that before, when he was principal, once I had the opportunity of going with other uh, gunmen for uh, uh, having hunting these birds. And the time was there when the van stuck in mud. And I remember that uh, Principal Sahib, he was principal at that time, he's helped everyone in picking up the bricks and mud and bring and put it under the feet of the van which was stuck in the mud. So this was the way all the people did. I remember that. I also remember the day when he put on the turban for the first time. He was principal of college, and one Ramadan he was given the duty of presenting a darsin Masjid Mubarak. The Huzur came in his micro bus, micro car, you can call it. And luckily, I happened to see him. It was strange for me to see a man sitting on the driver's seat with a turban. Because I knew that previously he used to have always a cap. So anyway, he came into the mosque and it so happened that the prayer was going on and started and he happened to come and stand on my right hand side, Hazrat Mirza Nasr Masra. And he was wearing the turban. So when the prayer finished, I finished quickly because I had joined from the beginning. He missed one rakat and he finished later on. So the moment he finished the prayer, I offered my hand and said, Salam, shook hand. And I also said, Mia Sahib, Pagli Mubarak. So that was, I mean, very innocent wording and statement. But I remember that I am the first person to see the Pagli, the uh, turban on his head. And I am the first person who greeted him like that. <laughs> so these are the very cherished memories of those things. Then, there are so many other things. Uh, college time is there. Now I come to the, uh, in that time when I was in Jamia, first in college, I used to have the debate and speeches, travel here and there, presenting college. Then Jamia came. When I came to Jamia, I had done my master's. And I was second in Punjab University. I was given certain awards. The whole uh, uh, team of teach professors of Jamia, they were convened by uh, Principal Mir Daud Sahib to interview me, to decide the matter that in which class this boy should be admitted, because I had done a master's in Arabic. So the whole staff members, they asked me one question each. I tell you one thing very interesting. Maybe I don't cover the subject, but the thing is very interesting. Hazrat Malik Sefer Mansai, you must be knowing him very well. He asked me a question about Fika, because Fika was a subject which I had not studied there in college. He asked me, can you tell me what sort of water it should be which is suitable for performing the wuzu? This was a new question for me. But I said that, uh, yes, uh, water should be simple, clean, pure, and uh, there should be no smell. So he said, okay, if this definition that you have given is right, so tell me, is it permissible to perform wuzu 
with the sherbet rufsa. You know, the sherbet rufsa, very sticky <laughs> juice, you know. Okay, is it possible to perform Wufuzu with that? I said, no. He said, Moleksa, why? Because that, he was testing me, my line of argument. I said, the purpose of Wufuzu is cleanliness. And with Sherbat, you cannot have the cleanliness. Fragrance is there, sweetness is there, taste is there, but it's not the purity, cleanliness. Malik Sabkadne, yes, okay, next, next. <laughs> so anyway, I, I skipped three years of my study. And the seven-year course of Jamia, I covered in four years. And Alhamdulillah, I was first in the Shahid class. And as a monitor of the class, we requested Hazrat Khalifa Musi Salis that we would like to come and meet you. This time, 10 students have come into the field in one, one year. That was a jubilation because none, never ever before 10 students have graduated from Jamia in one year. So we would like to have, uh, uh, you know, we said just a photo, a mulaqat with him. Zul's reply came, Hazrat Mirza Nasr al that please do come and also have tea with me. So he added one item, meeting, photograph and tea. So anyway, we went there. Very nice, very historical picture. Many of you might have seen that. That was taken at that time. So then, this was the period, and uh, then I was, uh, you know, after that, uh, in Tariq e Jadid, I had some training for one year. My first posting was to London as the deputy imam. I came here. In 1973, Hadrat Khalifat Musi uh, Salis came to London for a visit. Before that, because I was elected Sadr Khudamul Ahmadiyya Central, you know, what you can say, it, it was a shock for me and a big shock that this huge responsibility has been given to me. I was working there. Suddenly I got a letter that Huzur has appointed you as a missionary to Japan. So you get ready and uh, we will book the seat for you. I, I immediately finished my job as the president of Khudam al Huzur was in Jhelum. I went there and I, want, uh, I wanted to leave, take the leave because how can I leave the country without the permission of Huzur? So I went there. That's an interesting thing that comes to my mind. There was a non ahmadi sitting with Huzur at that time. As soon as I sent the message, Huzur asked me to come in. I sat there and after finishing what he was saying, Huzur turned to me and said salam and all this. And then he introduced in a very gracious way. That is what touched my heart. Huzur said that this is one of our missionary who has served in Britain for three years and now I am sending him to the eastern side. First he went to west, now I am sending him to the east. Hazrat uh, uh, Khalifa Salis was all, always making a very, very important points in words. Very important message. Let me go further quickly. Please tell me when to finish. The next day that uh, Huzur came here uh, in 73, I was the deputy imam. Immediately Huzur, when he came here, he addressed me while coming out of his car. He said, from today, now on, you are going to be my treasurer, Khazanji. Zur made me the khazanchi. And they said that I will give you occasionally certain money. You keep it there and have a small note in your pocket all the time. And whenever I ask, you could give, give me the balance. You have to tell me what is the balance. So Zur gave me all the money which came to him from many sources. Then immediately I used to take, put it there, and the notebook was built. Huzur checked it again and again. Every time going for prayer, to say, what's the balance? <laughs> <laughs> so I have to tell, without looking at my notebook, this is the balance. Huzur said, okay. And he, he was very courteous, very kind, very, so much loving that I can't uh, describe in words. One thing which is very interesting, there are some missionaries, and other missionary-like superior people are there. I will tell them, once the, the Jamaat arranged a picnic 
in which all the missionaries participated. Huzur was requested to come. The picnic took place in a very beautiful garden near a very famous building in South Wales. The name of the place is Tintern Abbey. That is the building. It's a historic thing. On YouTube you can see the picture of that one. It's a famous thing, but it is all deliberate, broken. It, but the garden was quite good. So that garden was uh, the place where the picnic took place. The point I wanted to come is, with the meeting, the picnic was going on, all the people were enjoying. Huzur asked that all the missionaries, they should come on this place and make up a line. All the missionaries came, nearly 25, maybe 25 or 30 missionaries were there, because missionaries from Europe also had come there. So all the missionaries lined up. Hazur took out from his pocket of Echkan a very small camera, miniature camera, just the size of a matchbox. That was used called Leica camera. That is, I think, found nowadays as well. The company is there. But that was very, very early stages. That was a very expensive camera, very unique, very small. And very, the result, result was very good. Hazur asked us, all the missionaries to stand. I was among them. We stood there. Hazur himself took the camera from the pocket and he himself took the photograph. And then that went into the pocket. Hazur said, there is one question. Question for all the missionaries here. Anybody who can suggest a beautiful title for this photograph that I have taken? Who is going? I mean, naturally, Khalif of the time is standing there. It's not easy to open your mouth. So no, nobody spoke. And every come, Hazur asked again, can somebody give a title for this photograph? No reply. Three times Hazur said, but nobody could dare suggest anything or speak anything. Then Hazur spoke. And that is something which I want to share with you. Hazur said, is the Sveer ka unman hai? Khandrat ke memar, the builders of the ruins, that actually encapsulate the whole task of a missionary. Many of you are missionary men, inshallah, mashallah. So, Khandrat ke memar, that uh, uh, title he gave, and he was always speaking in that term. So, few words, deeper meanings, and inspiration and guidance in that. So that, but unfortunately, that picture is not available. I have been trying and rushing around, asking several people where this picture has gone, but that's nowhere. May Allah you know, find it somewhere. So that was there. So Huzur was very kind. Something very interesting happened. During his stay, when Huzur's departure was the time of his departure, going back to Pakistan came, that was almost the time for me to complete my tenure here in three years. So Zur sent a message. Message, not a, he sent a command to me, you know, through the proper channel office, that I should leave for Pakistan immediately. There were so many other things, you know, I, I'm skipping all of that. Zur said that you have to go quickly. I knew that the date which was given to me, that was one day, uh, just a minute. that was the day, the next day Huzur was leaving for Pakistan. Just one day before Huzur. So that was something very heavy on my heart, that Huzur is here, and just one day before I am going back. This was the instruction, but I said, yes, I am but I paid a very, very polite, humble supplication that if Huzur may say that I can go just one day after Huzur so that I can see farewell and I be up to the last minute. It was granted. But then again message came that if you have to go back, then go back one day and day earlier. I said, I am a humble servant, I will go. There was some wisdom behind that that I need not mention. Anyway, the, 
thing is that uh, when this was my return was planned the jamaat arranged a tea party uh, to on that occasion and they requested huzur to also come and join huzur said okay i will come so that was something very great for me you know a party in you can say for me is being given by the jamaat and the khalifa of the time is present in that one so far as my information is this has never happened in the history of ahmadiyat that ever the khalifa of the time is visiting a country and a missionary goes and a party is given and khalifa tul masi is there but he came he sat there i i have happened to sit close to him next to him after the food everything photographs were there you know the personality of huzur was so uh, magnanimous that one could not come closer to that although he was extremely loving very kind so i was standing a bit away just 6 inches away from him and i remember huzur caught me from his shoulder and dragged me cl- close to him and said come close come close and just you know touching him and rubbing with his arm i stood there and the photographs were taken there huzur led the prayer the next morning when i was going to heathrow airport everything was ready my box uh, luggage was put in the car the information was given to huzur that now uh, you know about me he said that he is now about to leave so huzur came down it was quite early the time huzur was in his uh, sleeping gown he came down all the way three steps of uh, i mean staircases three stages are there huzur came down all the way and then huzur led the silent prayer so again this is a unique honor i mean, i'm i'm not saying anything for myself i'm just telling the greatness and the kindness and the love and the affection of hazrat ifatul musi at that time that what he showed was humble servant so then i'm in this one so so many things are there but i think should i move on move on yes yeah, sir please then hazrat ifatul musi the fourth came and you remember that it's a long story his migration from there he sent me there here i, I came here i became ill and i was just recovered and going to the uh, office downstairs then one night i was sleep in my bed my wife was along with me the telephone bell rang and uh, masood jelmi sahib who was at that time wakil uh, tabshir he was there he was one of my classmate in ma arabic so i recognized his voice so he was asked me have you recognized the voice who am i i said i i know he said okay so get ready i said what for he said huzur is coming to london so then you know i did not take it very uh, seriously in that matter that whenever huzur goes to a country his going is not so all all of a sudden if huzur goes to canada you must get the information one or two two months ago beforehand at least one month you get ready so i was thinking that huzur might be coming within two three weeks at least or one month so i innocently asked him that uh, when when huzur is coming he said tell me what's the time in the clock at this in london <laughs> i said it's 3 uh, o'clock in the morning 3 o'clock and uh, fajr prayer is at 5 o'clock so he said huzur is coming at 8 o'clock <laughs> <laughs> and huzur has already huzur has already left pakistan and huzur's plane has also crossed the european territory and now very soon huzur is going to land in uh, holland and there the plane will be changed on the next flight he will be arriving in london at 8 o'clock so five hours notice was there i have to vacate everything clean the settle my office all the papers were all distributed just like you can imagine <laughs> upside in the house all the luggage you know beddings and children clothes family kitchen bathroom everything everything was done 
I mean, it's a whole story. I have written everything and mentioned many times, but this time telling you. So five o'clock, the prayer was there. <clears throat> I led the prayer. It was a great emotion. You know, such a heavy responsibility is coming on Manshur. I was the Amir of UK at that time and a missionary in charge and humble servant of Hazur. So it was a great responsibility. On that day, I conducted the Majlisi Amla in a very strange way. All the members were sitting. I said, this is the news, and now I'm going to distribute the responsibilities. The person who is requested for a task, he should get up from the Majlisi Amla and start doing it. The Sadr Khuzamul Amdiya should get up and get the security duty. Secretary Ziafat, go and open the kitchen, make the necessary everything, and this and that and all traffic, transport, this. All the duties were allocated to the people and the Majlis Amla dispersed. And that was a very quick shot because time was not there. And we were then waiting uh, to, uh, for the arrival of Uzur in Holland. Telephone was not coming, although I sent a message there that as soon as Uzur comes, give us a call so that we can be sure that by Alhamdulillah Uzur is there. Somebody came running to me. I was, uh, you know, walking to and fro outside because I couldn't sit with the quietness at that, at that time. The man ran, came running. Huzur is on telephone. Please come. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, you can imagine this situation. Like a mad person, you know, I read immediately. And Huzur was there, very happy, very confident, very in a very fresh mood. Huzur said, Assalamu alaikum, kya hal hai? So I was emotional. I mean, Huzur is, alhamdulillah, healthy and safe and everything because of the situation in, back in Pakistan. So Huzur, I said, Huzur, uh, uh, I am all, all right. What, what's the condition of Huzur? Huzur asked about me and I asked about Huzur. Anyway, briefly Huzur said, we have changed the plane. So that uh, now our plane will be arriving there at 10 o'clock instead of 8 o'clock. So this grace period of two hours was given to us by Yazur. They changed the plan. There might be some other consideration as well. Anyway, Yazur came here. And uh, I was luckily, as the Amir, first person to shake hand and embrace Yazur at the airport, right close to the airport. KLM was the carrier. We went there and the officer, they took the passports. Nobody, none of us, or the Huzur, was needed to go to the counter for the stamp on the passport. It was the KLM officer. He took the passport, and we were just listening there. Tuck, tuck, tuck. The stamps were down there. And, and the entry was there. At that time, it's not possible to tell you something more, but it was a very precarious time because of the situation in Pakistan and also the opposition of the community and all the evil designs of the rulers at that time. Anything could be imagined. So it was a very, very dangerous moment. So Alhamdulillah, Huzur came out. And Huzur was so jolly, so happy, happy, I should must say. But he was very tired, very, very tired for such a long journey. From Rabwa to Karachi, he traveled in car. The same night he traveled from Karachi to Amsterdam, then the, soon after that he was coming there. Long journey. He was very tired, but there was a smile, there was a determination, there was a zeal and a commitment that we are going to move forward. That I can't forget. Can't describe in two words, true words for you. This was the picture that I saw there. And Vizur came. And in an English style, he asked uh, the KLM officer, how is the weather? <laughs> <laughs> the first question. I mean, this is the style. Zur was very informal with everyone. And then we sat in the car. Uh, the very first question asked, Zur asked me, I was sitting along with the driver, and Huzur, Begum Saiba, and two daughters were in the back seat. It was a great Mercedes, which was uh, donated by uh, uh, Shanwas Khan Sahib, Chaudhary Shanwas Sahib, he sent this car 
when he heard about the arrival of Rasul and sent the keys to me that these are this for the car and this car is for Zeus use. Without asking, he said it, I sent it. Anyway, the very first question Huzur asked me was, anyone can imagine? Huzur asked me, what time is Zohar prayer? The very first question, he was, this was about 11.30 at that time when he arrived there. So he said, what time is the prayer? The most important thing in his life. This is a lesson for us. He said, when the prayer? I said it's the, at uh, uh, one o'clock, or perhaps uh, one o'clock, I don't remember now. Normally it is one o'clock. So Zuzu said, well, well, we will be able to do it. He also knew that how long it will take from the airport to the mission house, because he has never, many, many times he has come here. Anyway, he came here. He set a new tradition. He said, nobody, people should stand in line, and nobody has to come to me to shake hand with me. Rather, I will go to each and every person. So all the people, nearly 200 of people, has assembled at that, at that time. Within a short time interval, just the their mobile phone was not there at that time. Nobody could make a, use of that one. Otherwise, the whole UK Jamaat <laughs> wasn't there. But only the people from London immediately did there. So Huzur went to all the people one by one. And then uh, Huzur asked, Last named certain people, inquired about himself, and lastly he said that yes, I'm just going in to do the visu and come for prayer, and immediately he came. He led the Zohar prayer, and he announced there that uh, told me that uh, make the arrangement for a speech. I am going to speak to the members of the Jamaat in Mahmud Hall, Jamaat Hall, after Asar prayer. So we made the arrangements. So Huzur then uh, delivered a very, very historic address. Recently I was able to listen to that one on YouTube. It is available there, the whole address. Unlucky, I mean, Jamaat was not so prepared for so many things. You will perhaps laugh when I tell you Jamaat did not have a, a movie camera at that time. No uh, video recording was there. Just audio recording, that was the maximum thing we could do at that time, very quickly. But later on it has been converted into a video with photographs. So Huzur spoke for more than one hour and gave all the detail of the circumstances which compelled him to come here. So and then he spoke a lot, I think the speech is there, it's worth listening. It's a wealth of knowledge in that. So one interesting thing, I'm just trying to pick up here and there. Zur at the end of the speech said that uh, I'm so busy. I have to do so many things. I have so much task on my head, in my mind. I don't have any time to meet the people. So no member should request for mulakat. Because it is difficult and very heavy for me to say no to anyone. So nobody should request. But the person I would like to consult something I would name him, himself, I will call that person. And I tell you a historic thing. The very first person who was called upon was Dr. Abdul Salam Sahib, who was sitting in the front row. And Hazur said, Dr. Sahib, aap mulaqat ke liya hai. So he is that historic, blessed person. And all the blessing came to him. Yes, the khilafat e khamsa election is a very historic moment. I was a Luckily, by the grace of Allah, the Secretary of Majlis Shura and Hazrat Khalifa Musi Khamis Sayyidullah Ta'ala in the capacity of Kile Nazir Allah, he was the uh, over, overseeing all the arrangements because he is responsible for all the things in the absence of the Khalifa. So he came here, I took all the instructions, guidance from him, and then I think he was, he was the person to always request him to come. He was such an unknown person in London. I tell you one thing. He came here and there is a fence outside the London mosque. In the gate he wanted to go to the mosque to offer his prayer one day. Just one day before he was elected caliph. The khadim on duty stopped him. He said, you can't go in. You bring your registration card. 
So Huzur was quiet. He did not say anything. My elder brother, Atal Grim Sahib, he was nearby. He went to the Khadim to tell him that he is Nazare Allah. He is the uh, head of the community, and in that sense, an administrative head. So then the Khadim immediately came. Yes, yes you please go. Huzur remarked that, look, there in this uh, place, nobody knows me. I am a stranger. But that was out of modesty. Otherwise, there were thousands of people who knew him. Anyway, the, on the election day, he was the last uh, person. All the issue, tickets were issued with the signature of Nazir Allah and uh, the sample self as secretary. All the tickets were given. Eligible members were informed to come there on time. And then the door of the mosque was closed. Inside what happened, it's not possible and it is not allowed to go into the detail of that. But uh, the, the, where the history starts there is the announcement. Election took place and the members, they took the uh, bath at the end of the Khalifat al -Masih. And then it was the moment to announce to the whole world. And according to the rules, it was my responsibility. I took the permission from Masood so that I can make the announcement. So then I made the announcement. At that time, the windows, doors, uh, and uh, everything was closed. No microphone was there. No recording was there. No MTA was there. No, none outside the small mosque knew what has happened. So the first information about the election was given in that announcement, which was made by the symbol set. I knocked at the mic is that this, and the MDA immediately switched on the MDA. And uh, that I made the announcement. The people listened. And then Azur said that, uh, before that I may mention that according to the rules, before even, well before that, the person who is elected, the caliph, he has to take a pledge himself before taking the bath from other people. So when I humbly submitted after the election that Azur, uh, you have to take the pledge, pledge before taking the bath from the people. Azur said, is that so? So I said, yes, so the, uh, this is the rule. Azur said, okay, give me. So Azur then looked at the paper and then took the pledge himself. And then he took the pledge from other people. <coughs> so then at the time, this was over, at that moment Azur said, I, that is the historic thing which you must have listened many times. The moment came when uh, the time was there to allow the people outside. There were 1,700 people, 1,700 people outside the mosque at that time, open in the Crescent Hall Road and Melrose Road. They were waiting, and the people were coming to, allowed to come in. I made the announcement, and now I said the door should be opened. The people came in. And then Zur saw that people are standing and the mosque is full and there are so many people. So Huzur very quietly said, Ahbab Bajan. That Huzur said when Mike was away. So the voice was carried to the people inside the mosque and they sat down. But these thousands of people outside the mosque, they did not listen. So at that moment, I made the announcement that so I just conveyed the message as Azur said. That message was heard all over the world. And what happened afterwards was that all the people, wherever they may be, maybe in the door, on the steps, outside, in the gate, on the road, or in wherever on the pavement, all of them they sat down. And some people told me later on, that the people watching MTA, even in Australia, Canada, America, and all other countries, in Pakistan, in India, all those people, if they were standing, they sat there. Because that was the first instruction of the newly elected caliph of Ahmadiyyat. So that was a remarkable thing. That is the only resemblance of that uh, obedience which was done by the companions of the Holy Prophet <laughs> So that is, scenario was there you know, in front of our eyes. And then Azur took the bath and what happened later on. The details further than what happened, they are in confidence 
and they are not disclosed. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. <coughs> we start the second part, and it has been agreed that uh, inshallah we will continue up to Isha prayer, and you will have to wait for your dinner after that. <coughs> uh, I think uh, the previous session was uh, rather going too long, although I tried to cut it down. But now I have. Uh, some notes in front of me. I will just pick up those things which I think uh, very appropriate to be done. Okay, when Hazrat uh, um, Khalifatul Masih Rabe, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, arrived here, then it was a huge task in front of him. He himself mentioned that I have to do so many things, and he embarked on that plan immediately without wasting a second. And his Friday sermon, speeches, messages, everything, a message went to the whole world that we have to stand up on our feet and discharge our duties very vigilantly, very dedicatedly. <clears throat> now there are certain things which I would like to mention. One is uh, the thing is that you know the situation in which Huzoor had to migrate from Pakistan. When he came here, it was a great shock for the whole government of Pakistan. And uh, they were abso absolutely upset that how come he has gone away like this. You don't know perhaps, have, how, many have you ever, how many of you have read the book, The Man of God? So I think uh, you know those things, and those who do not know, I have to say something for them. One big uh, difficulty was at the airport in Karachi, because the name on the part passport was Mirza Tahir Ahmed, head of the Ahmadiyya community. And the order for General Dictator Ziaul Haq was the Mirza Nasir Ahmed, head of the Ahmadiyya community, is not allowed to leave the country. So the people were in doubt what to do. They tried to find the clarification, but couldn't. So uh, because it was obviously the passport was valid, Mirza Tahir Ahmed, head of the Ahmadiyya community, the person had to allow. So this was a very miraculous uh, incident, which uh, indicates to my mind that just as during the migration of the Holy Prophet he was able to migrate safe and sound despite all the enemies around him. That was exactly the case there. Exactly, I draw a simile between the Hijrat Khalifat al Masih Rabe and Hijrat Medina. You know, there is a very similarity with that. That is something which is very inspiring, and we must ponder over it as a great sign of Allah Almighty. When I came here, uh, I think it was uh, one or two days later, a telephone call came from BBC World Service. They, print, uh, they present a program, Sair Bean, in Urdu and English as well. That is very widely listened all over Asia, particularly in Pakistan in those, in those days. And their presenter, uh, I, because uh, at that time when Huzoor arrived, uh, there was no designated private secretary with, them, with him. There were two other people, but having other duties. I was just uh, doing the, this job there. So I picked up the telephone. He said, uh, I hear, we hear, hear that Hazrat Mirza, Tahir, Mirza Tahir Masab is here. I said, yes, he is here. I so would like to interview him. So I then asked him, what, what for? and everything there. The point was that uh, when I asked him, how long is the interview? How long time you will give? He said our whole slot is 12, 12 minutes. So out of that, three or four minutes can be given to him. So I, I said, I, I will ask him, Azur, if he agrees. I asked Azur, Azur immediately declined. declined. He said, no, and this is not right. Just uh, say that it's not possible. 
But uh, then I mentioned to him of my own that not from Huzur, but from me, one suggestion that if you devote the whole program for his interview, you might be able to get him on air. So he said, well, we will think. So next day his phone came. He said, yes, we agree. The whole time will be given to Mirza Tahir Sahib if he agrees. So I told Huzur that yes, Huzur, they have come, come back that they agree to give the full time. Huzur laughed and enjoyed. And he said, I knew they are going to give this. Anyway, and then the next day the person came and we had a meeting in upstairs in library. And uh, this person, the representative of uh, uh, Serbin, he uh, said that I, can, I want to give you the questions which we are going to ask you tomorrow. Huzur said, if you want to give, okay, give me. And he started uh, pronouncing the, uttering the, those questions. And Huzur asked me to take, them, take it down. Uh, three of us were there. So I took it down on the piece of paper, scribbling very quickly. And later on, I put it in writing and gave it to Huzur. Huzur had a look at that and gave me to him. I put it in my pocket. Next day, we went there. And would you believe me that the very first question he asked, that was not in those questions which he gave yesterday. And then Huzur answered. Then the second question, again a different question. The third question, again a different question. Fourth question, again a different. All questions which he disclosed the previous day, they ignored. Look, you can, what a, a special type of trap they were putting for Huzur at that time. But Huzur answered this, uh, all these questions so beautifully, so beautifully, that you will be surprised, just to give you the taste of that. One question he asked that uh, Mirza Sahib, now that you, the government of Pakistan has declared you, your community as non-Muslim, so why don't you believe it? Why don't you believe it? A declaration has been made. Huzur replied, just listen, the profoundness of Huzur's answer. Huzur says that, do you think they, that if a sane person is called to be a dog, should that sane person start working? Because I, I, the name dog has been given to me, so I should start barking. So you say whatever you say, but we say what we have to say. So this was the answer. Huzur gave it in very, very straightforward way. And that was surprising. And when the interview was over, Huzur came out. And as Huzur knew that I also know the questions, Huzur put his hand over my shoulder and said, do you know what questions he has given yesterday? I said, Huzur, they are in my pocket even right now. They asked all the different questions. But look at his answer. <coughs> Huzur said, yes, that is the case, all the different questions. But actually, these were the questions which I wanted he should ask me, be asking me. And I was mentally ready in a way. This was the, Allah's doing. So he was ready mentally to give answer the questions, but they tried to trap Huzur in a way, in difficult questions, and as the program goes live all over the world. So that was a very, very sensitive moment. But that uh, interview of Huzur became so popular in Pakistan that in all villages, towns, in Ahmadis, non-Ahmadis, people were listening and reciting and enjoying what a strong answer Huzur has given to them. That is a great, uh, you know, majestic style of Huzur that I witnessed on that day. On the modest side, I tell you one instance. The Bosnian uh, crisis was also, during those days, after some time, his arrival. <coughs> Once the Jamaat arranged a delegation of Bosnian people to come and see Huzur. And Huzur had made it very clear that uh, this contact and uh, uh, support to the Bosnian should never be linked to tabligh. Don't make it a tool of tabligh. Do the service for the sake of service. And uh, 
apart from that, whatever you can do, you can do. Anyway, these people came. To cut a long story short, again, that's something difficulty. When you have to tell something, the whole scenario comes into my mind. Hazur was sitting, all these people, 20 of them nearly, men and mostly the men, grown up people, some young and some children as well. They were all sitting around him. But the situation of these people was so poor that they, were, they had to run away from their country without their clothes, without belongings, without any money, not even food. So they were living hand to mouth. And the, the plight of those people was really very, very sad. Hazur talked to them, gave them the encouragement, gave them the advice. And after that, Hazur said, wait a bit. And all the people kept sitting. I was in that, that very room on the right side of Hazur. I was surprised at what happened. After so Hazur has suddenly stopped the meeting, the people have come and they are waiting. Hazur went out of the house and went up, went up, up upstairs. And after about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, Huzur came down and his full width of two arms was full with clothes. Clothes of Huzur himself, his eschkans, his coat, jacket, trouser, and um, 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 socks and what not. All the, all the clothes Huzur has been using, he brought it for them and put it on the table and ask them, pick, pick up your choice, whatever you like. So these people, uh, I don't want to use the word greedy, but I think because they were um, helpless at that time, so these people just, you know, tried to grab all, all these things. And Hazur said, okay, put it on, put it on. So somebody is uh, putting on the etchkan of Hazur, somebody is putting the coat of Hazur, a jacket of Hazur, and this and that. And these people were sitting there. And then Hazur was very happy that at least some support has been given to them. Then Hazur said, okay, stay on. I will come again. Hazur went again. And again, he brought some more clothes. And then later on, he asked his son-in-law and uh, great granddaughter to join. And they also brought so many clothes. So clothes after clothes, different types of blanket and shoes and whatnot, all these things were there. They are coming and they were sitting there. And when they were sitting there, one strange thought came to my mind that I want to share with you. When they were wearing the clothes of Huzur, and Huzur was the spiritual king, I was reminded that Badshah Tere Kapdon Se These are the people who are really the king in that sense, who are seeking blessing from the clothes of Azur. So this was very inspir inspirational, very enjoyable in moment. And all these people were so happy, so happy. And one thing more I tell you, which I think, uh, I, okay, I tell you. The thing is that I felt that after that, distribution of all the clothes, Hazur did not have even a change of etchkan. The etchkan, blue color, that he was wearing for nearly one month or so, he did not change that one. Because there was no other etchkan left in his wardrobe. You can just imagine. It's difficult for me to describe, but that was the situation. His sacrifice, his love for these people, his passion, his desire of helping the people. So that was a very unforgettable incident which I happened on that day. <coughs> then, uh, then on a light mood, let's say, Zur had a very uh, comprehensive sort of personality. He was very serious. He was very utmost dedicated to religion and speeches, very, very impressive speeches. And uh, you know, in, in all way, seriousness and uh, sober personality was there.
but he was always also very enjoyable person you know he used to share happiness with people and uh, one of the thing was that he should he used to say tell everything everybody the true thing he never tell a lie i mean this is a big thing i'm saying I mean, it's not expected even from ordinary people but what i mean to say that huzur never ever said anything which was against the fact that must be the right word not the uh, telling a lie everything factual he always uh, pointed out for example a person uh, huzur went into one house and the ladies there prepared the food and you know that uh, when the ladies prepare the food they are always very keen to hear from huzur huzur say shabash shabash mashallah bada acha pakaya hai so huzur what did say because the food was unfortunately not so quality food so huzur keeping the line of truthfulness the remark of huzur made was that uh, you have really done very hard work <laughs> <laughs> so that was true after all the food is tasty or not it is prepared with some effort so how true was he was so that is also one of his character once uh, he was uh, in a meeting and zarda came and zarda was one of the huzur's favorite and uh, huzur was uh, uh, such a person that he would like to have lot of sugar in sweet dishes lot of salt in salan and lot of chilies in the salan everything should be to the highest degree otherwise it is not right so it so happened that one day the person who was uh, normally preparing the food for azur he prepared a zarda and uh, zarda was unfortunately perhaps he forgot or made a mistake it was the sweet was very less very less not up to the mark of huzur so now this man was uh, used to come slowly slowly to huzur during the davat and he would uh, come step by step and he would wait that huzur will look at me and he would say oh t- kamal kar diya tum tumne kamal kar diya to huzur huzur had to say but he, he always did you imagine what did he say <laughs> huzur said uttering his name which i don't mention <laughs> because the pers- person mar- might be around here <laughs> huzur uttered his name and he said bhai aaj to kamal kar diya hai aisa zarda banaya hai ke sugar ka har mazeez kha sakta hai just enjoy this response you know how beautifully he said the truth without hurting his Heart, you know mind as well his heart and similarly there is another thing he was very f- jolly person in that sense very appreciating person even some people somebody would do a small thing who would, would appreciate in a way more than what he did but not exaggeration and not going into misstatement there is another example which is in my notes somebody an elderly person once wrote a poem huzur is a well known poet you know he was a very very expert high quality that gentleman he wrote a poem he was a friend to me as well he used to come and tell me he gave that copy to huzur and then after a while he came back to me one day very happy he said oh i sent my poem to huzur and azur has sent it back to me and he has written his comment on that so i asked him tell me what is the comment so no just be prepared to listen the answer azur ne wahan pe likha ke aapki nizam mili tawakko se badhkar hai i mean you can see that he did not exaggerate not any misstatement but just say tawakko se badhkar and that gentleman was very happy <laughs> that this is a great appreciation that i have got again 
Okay, I think that is enough of this uh, aspect. Huzur was very particular in honoring the non-Muslims. Whenever he met anybody anywhere, particularly those the leaders, once an NMP member of parliament came and he had a dinner with Huzur. And uh, I received him outside and uh, took him inside after the food, the, every meeting went on. After that, as courtesy and as Islamic teaching, Zura was very particular about honoring the guest, particularly the non-Muslims. So he was very particular about that. So his practice was that he would always go, as the instruction is, that the host should go uh, outside to the, uh, to, the, um, to, to the door and see off the guest. So Huzur came out with that step down in the uh, staircases. That gentleman was an MP, member of parliament. And he, Huzur, you know, accompanied him and took, brought him down. Then he came out of the door. And then he, Huzur asked him, where is your car? Because he was, came alone. These English people are not very, very informal people. The members of the parliament, some of them, they go on bicycle. So he, Azur, courtesy sake, asked him, where is your car? And that gentleman, that MP replied, Azur, I have come on bike. Azur did not smile at that, because it might be taken in a negative sense. Azur said, OK, let's, where is your bike? So he came close to the bike. He put on the uh, rubber, uh, rubber, what is it, gallus? What is the word there? But when you uh, ride on a bicycle, in order to protect your trouser, you have a covering on that, rubber. We call it gallus, gatus, or something. So he put it that on, and he got ready. And until that moment that he person was on the seat of the uh, of his car, uh, of his uh, bike, Huzur stood there. And then Huzur said, OK, goodbye. And he did not say a single word that, how come you don't have the car or you have not come like that? So that was also something very, that is actually following the noble tradition of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think uh, uh, I will mention a similar incident about Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Ayyadawallahu Ta'ala bin Israel Aziz as well. That also happened there. Uh, there is one incident about a, a Canadian professor that you might have heard many times or sometimes that I narrate for you. The name of the professor was Professor Gulteri. He's a famous one. You must might be knowing him. He was uh, well connected with the Jamaat and he came here to seek guidance and meet Huzur. So when he came here, there was still time for him to go to Huzur the members of the Jamaat brought him to me in my office. I spoke to him. And I, thinking that he is uh, meeting Huzur for the first time, I told him something by way of introduction. Huzur's background, his position, his knowledge, his expertise, and this and that, all these things. And I also mentioned that uh, the members of the Jamaat, they love Huzur very much. I mean, the affection and kindness and gratefulness to him is par excellence. So this subject I highlighted so that you can appreciate that uh, what a great person I am going to see. Anyway, he went to see Huzur. He met and discussed and came out. And when he came out, he again came back to my office. And he told me something which I like to share with you. He said that uh, thank you very much for the introduction that you gave me for His Holiness, I have met him. And, but I have come to tell you something, that you emphatically told me that all members of the Jamaat, men and women, young and old, they love the Khalifatul Masih. But after meeting him and after listening to His Holiness, I have come to this conclusion that His Holiness loves them more than they love him. That is, that is my feeling. The way he mentioned about the members of the community, their sacrifices, their modesty, their humbleness, and the feeling that I felt in his heart for the members of the Jamaat, that is 
far excellent than the affection and the kindness of members of the jamaat one thing more there was a program likam al arab i have you seen that program ever huzur used to sit there and hilmi shafi sahab our arab brother late brother he used to uh, translate the english answer to arabic and huzur as he knew arabic as well used to listen very carefully so much so that many time huzur would correct him that i did not say this what you have translated in arabic so he was surprised hilmi sahab that i know arabic and english i do it but how come hazra zur knows that what i have translated so anyway the incident i want to relate is that once the question was asked there is a verse in the holy quran in the beginning of fourth chapter fourth part of the holy quran lan tanalul birra hatta tunfiku mimma tuhibun you cannot get an access to the virtue unless you spend out of that which you love so somebody asked the question and uh, hilmi sahab you know in from arab country the question came and he translated and uh, explained huzur gave the answer huzur explained in need in, in detail i think you know what huzur might have said about that in relation to other verses and then suddenly the thing i want to tell you then suddenly huzur said keep sitting i am i just come back within few minutes huzur stood up live transmission was going on and huzur's instruction was the transmission should go on so when huzur stood up we had to continue talking and uh, doing something you know by way of this or that huzur stood up everybody was surprised what happened somebody might be ill some urgent call might be there some urgent uh, uh, job is to be done what happened everybody was perplexed what happened after 2 minutes the door opened of the studio and we saw huzur coming in with a big tray in his hand and there were five or six bottles of juice and six glasses or seven glasses as the number of the participants in his hand and huzur brought it there and put it on the table and then Huzur said that uh, I have explained theologically what is the meaning of this verse. Then I thought of something else. There is a very famous and my favorite juice. The name of that is chufi. It is made in Spain. So somebody from Spain has sent me some bottles. I have put it in my fridge because I like that juice very much. So I wanted that it should be chilled. you know very before i drink it so these bottles were there when you asked me the commentary of this verse i said i thought i give you practical answer <laughs> so huzur brought the bottles gave the glasses to all of them i can say that luckily i i was sitting on the, in his right side so i had the share first <laughs> so huzur put the poured the juice in the in the glasses One and two, three, four, seven, eight people were there. Then my turn, Huzur would put, pour the juice, and then by that time, if these people have finished, Huzur will put more. So this went on, and and every, at that time, Huzur said, "Okay, yes, this is this is what is meant by this verse of the Holy Quran." And everybody was so surprised and so overjoyed that we have listened not only the theological. answer to this verse and the commentary rather we have seen the practical demonstration and example of that and what huzur had from that juice was just this much little bit 1 inch of a glass not more than that only that juice was left over that huzur put in his own glass and had it that was hazrat khalifa tumsi rabi <laughs> okay now one one example i think somebody asked me that i should said one thing more about uh, one thing which i couldn't do are you pointed yes i, I got it that example i 
Huzur was very forgiving, very loving. I mean, as everyone, all the caliphs are like that, but when I'm talking about him. The thing was that uh, once uh, the announcement of a, a English couple, Ahmadi couple, was to be made. Uh, and there were some non, uh, uh, non-Muslim friends and relatives, they were all came to the mosque, they sat in the, on the back. And normally the practice was that uh, uh, I was asked to uh, give the uh, in, in nikah sermon in English and uh, announce the nikah. So Huzur sent a message through the office to me that today we have got some non-Muslim guest. So therefore in your uh, sermon, nikah sermon, you also mentioned something about the Islamic teaching of marriage and uh, regarding that. Say something about that as well. Okay. So this uh, message, uh, uh, you know, I stood up and I announced just in a, in a normal way, without mentioning this thing, anything about that. And when I, I was very quite happy because I did not message, got the message from her, did not get the message from Asur. The office was unable to convey the message to me. So therefore, according to the custom, it has to be very brief because Hazrat Huzur is sitting there. In his presence, I, I had to announce the nikah. So I keep it to the minimum. So I did the same. After that, there was a party for these guests, especially who, who came. And at that, when Huzur sat, I was sitting in the back of the Mahmud Hall. That was a very heavy moment for me. Huzur mentioned that today I requested Imam Sahib that he should tell the guests something about the Islamic way of marriage. But I don't know why he did not do that. Why did, why did, why he did not choose to do that, something like that. Exactly, I remember it. And I was sitting there. You can imagine my feeling at that that a command and instruction from Khalifa al Musi is there. And this, this person, myself, does not comply with that one. How is it possible? What happened? What a great mistake I have done. I have not done. But I was surprised that I did not get any message. But Huzur said that in front of all the people. And I was just, you know, as somebody has been butchered. So, meeting was over, I went to my office and I immediately wrote a letter of apology to Huzur. And I mentioned in that, that uh, I tell you honestly by God that this instruction has never been conveyed, conveyed to me. Otherwise, how was it possible that son of Abulata should not have obeyed that? Just like the Hadrat Abu Bakr once mentioned that Abu Kahfa ki bete ki kya majal hai kaisa kare. I I ki Abu Lata ki bete ki majal kya hai ki wo usre na kare. So I wrote the letter in great apology. Huzur read the letter immediately. Normally, you know, this was a good thing that when I write a letter to Huzur, it is presented immediately. Mm-hmm. Huzur immediately saw the letter and wrote in his hand ki. Aap bilkul mutmir hain aur koi fikr na karein. Because there were certain words which I mentioned in my apology letter to Huzur that I am so sorry, so sad and so angry with myself that what has happened. So Huzur said, don't worry. Mainne tak pata kar liya hai, daftar walo ne aapko paigami nahi nahi diya. To aap bilkul koi fikr na karein. That was a day, day of Eid for me. When Huzur said that one. So this sort of things are also happen. One more inst- uh, from Khalifa Tulmusi Rabbe. That is that, uh, again, it's uh, related to nikah. Once a nikah, nikah, I have announced many nikahs in Huzur's presence. And very interesting things have been happening. I can, I can write a full article on that, how oh, about things happening. One very outstanding is one, the one I'm going to tell you. Once a, uh, member of the, the family, a remote member of the family of Huzur living in America, they ha- had a nikah to be performed here. And they requested Huzur to perform, announce the nikah. 
for some reason which is not known to me, Huzur did not like to announce the nikah himself. Huzur asked me that you nikah, announce the nikah. Then these people requested, when they came to know that Huzur is not going to announce, they said, okay Huzur, if you are not going to announce the nikah, at least you become our vakil, attorney on our behalf to say, to give the consent of the nikah. Huzur was very, you know, meticulous and he was a man of principle. He made the principle that uh, in such case I am not going to announce, but when they say you become the vakil, he said, okay, I am ready for that. So now what happened? <laughs> that is something, it's a great scenario. On that day, all the mosque is full, Huzur came, Huzur led the prayer in Mehrab, and then Huzur asked me, he stood up and he asked me that you now come for the nikah, and you have announced. And Huzur left Mehrab, came in that position in the first row where I was sitting at that time. Huzur sat there in that first row. And then when the announcement came, so that was the difficult moment was when I had to ask, because it was obviously, I have to ask the attorney, the vakil, that do you in the capacity of the vakil agree to such and such nikah? So then I said, now I would like to seek the consent of Huzur about that. Huzur stood up. Just imagine, Huzur was sitting, just as normally all the people stand up when they give the consent. Huzur stood up and I had to see very reluctantly in very diffi with great difficulty that uh, Hadrat Mirza Tahir Ahmad Sahib, I uh, request you to tell me or announce that in the capacity of the vakil are you are agreeable to this one. To Huzur said, yes I do. He stood up and then he said, and then sat down. That was a moment in which, what comment you can make? He was a man of principle. He did not want to excuse himself or think that I am the caliph of the time and I can just skip, I can say yes, sitting. He followed the rule to give, to give a lesson to all members of the community. Okay, I think the message has come something about... Huh? Yes. Okay. Now I think Hadrat uh, Khalifa Si Khamis. The time is there. Little bit. There is again a long list. <laughs> but uh, in this uh, period of Hadrat uh, Amirul Mumini Nayyadahullah wa Taala bin Asdadis, that is uh, really, really, I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, a glorious pe period of uh, victories of Islam expansion of Ahmadiyyat and also the acceptance of prayers. Three headings if you can like. I mean the, this is very very prominently they are uh, present in this very period. And uh, so far as uh, the acceptance of prayer is concerned I would like to mention one incident just, okay, I think I leave the notes there, just off and I tell you, <laughs> that's better. Once I went to a, a place in North Eng England, to, to one of my family related person, there was a doctor. He came from Pakistan some time ago. I went to their house, I was sitting there. I asked him that, uh, 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 have you got an employment there, job there? because it's difficult to find the job. He said that I have been sending so many letters on photocopies, photocopies every day, this hospital, that hospital, everywhere I'm sending it, but there is no reply. So I said, have you requested Huzur for prayer? He said, I, 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 I have done. Huzur says that uh, I will pray and that will be done. But he, this continued practice, it's a very long story, very interesting as it exactly happened. He finally told me one day, and he uh, uh, later on, he narrated that and told me on the phone as well. 
he said that uh, one day I was sitting in my house almost very much disappointed that I have done my best but the job is not coming. But Hazur says that job will be there. So one day he said I was sitting there and a letter came from Hazur in response to my request of prayer and it was written that job to aapko mil gaya hai phir aap kyun bar bar likhte hain so that person told me that uh, must be something uh, wrong somewhere maybe somebody has uh, misdirected some other letter to huzur and huzur says that job is there why do you uh, keep on writing to me job is there and the, what happens with the gentleman tells me told me that immediately at that moment when i was holding the letter in my hand there was a telephone call telephone call from a hospital where i had applied and they said you have applied for the job are you still available he said yes by all means can i just come today he said i left my breakfast there i went to the hospital because huzur has mentioned job to mil gaya hai फिर भी आप खत लिख सकते हैं तो देट इज दस एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ दर देर आर सो मेनी अदर थिंग्स लाइक दैट चले सब की बातें रह गई ये तो बड़ी है बात है अच्छा तो चलो ठीक है इनशाला फिर अल्लाह ताला मौका देगा तो फिर करेंगे बड़ी बातें हैं इन आपको बताएंगे हजरत साहेब हजूर ग्रेस ऑफ अल्लाह इज फुल ऑफ लव एंड अफेक्शन एंड काइंडनेस काइंडनेस टू चिल्ड्रन मैन वुमेन बॉयज गर्ल्स मिशनरीज वर्कर्स डिवोटीज एंड ऑल दोज पीपल हु सर्व द कॉज ऑफ अहमदियत ही इज ऑलवेज फुल ऑफ प्रेयर एंड पीपल से जस्ट वन ब्रीफ एग्जाम्पल ऐसे वन मिशनरी फ्राम अफ्रीकन कंट्री has written in in his uh, writing that we were looking forward to have the uh, commission house for her, mission jumaat and it was not possible and uh, and also there was no rain in the stores day rain was very much needed we continued to pray to huzur so he said at that time we started one another letter to huzur that rain should come because it is all the country is completely dry missionary has told me that we were still in the course of writing that the rain started the letter going to huzur not even gone there not even read by him but that letter allah the mercy came and immediately the rain started there and that period was over so there are so many things the acceptance of prayer is one aspect in the whole period of khilafat of huzur which is so glaring so inspiring and so a matter of so thanks to allah almighty that we can not full do full do full justice to that one